Hello, everyone. Um, my apologies for the delay. We just had some minor technical glitches, but we're now ready to go. Um, it's a great pleasure to um, talk about LogAI again. Um, and a big thanks to the entire team that we managed to be here, even after or with the COVID emergency and other emergencies happening at the same time. My name is Martin. I am uh, working in the Logistics Plus in Rome with the Field Preparedness Project. And my colleague Bernard um, is um, the yeah, project manager for LogAI. He will um, start here uh, the session. And Bernard, can you please go to the next slide? So what we are basically going to do is um, Bernard would give a very quick introduction and a practical example on um, where we are right now with LogAI. Um, we focus today on user journey. So we would first of all like to um, have a panel discussion uh, with several um, colleagues that we invited for a round table and then afterwards also open up for the entire audience. Um, our focus today is really how can we engage the community with this tour? What are the parts, the components that you deem very relevant for us to focus further on? And before I take too much time of, uh, of these 30 minutes, I would just hand over to Bernard um, for the introduction. Thank you, Bernard. Thank you, Martin. So first of all, I mean, I think that already all of you know a bit about Loki and maybe it's not the first time that they hear about that, but what we always want to say is that, okay, we, we built Loki. So this helps us, we have this platform for, uh, for information exchange, but at the end, what we are building is a community tool. What does it mean? It's like, like we're building this bottle. We have created this bottle, but we need uh, this to be useful. We need this water. We are filling it with water. We are getting data sources. We're connecting for global data sources. We are working on national level to connect to different partners to join and um, uh, to exchange this information. We're also collecting data from data field, from um, data collection app, from surveys. But at the end, we have to make this community. And to make this community, everyone has to put information or have to participate. So this is what I wanted to say. And the goal of this is how we're going to make this bottle full of water so everyone can benefit. So we can be better prepared and better coordinate and better informed. So I'm going to start first with a practical example just really rough, uh, really rough, really fast to explain a bit how the information flows, how this water flows around log A. And then we are going to have a round table because uh, we can show it again, but what better to show to you that the uh, people that is helping us on spreading the word of log A and making it as a community tool in every country we are rolling out. And then we'll have the open discussion. So let me start with the next slide. So, okay, we collect from first from global data, from national data. Here we can join with different partners, with different parts of the government, with different units, with different, uh, with different UN agencies, but we can also collect data from um, data collection apps. Let me show you an example. For example, really fast, we have this app. This example is for Malawi. Then we, for example, we can make reports of a lot of kinds. This is for physical access on frame. Then we click on a road that we see that this road is in uh, is uh, under construction. Then we make some comments like to make it easier to explain what is going on. And really fast, we click done and the report is sent. Then as you may already know, this is like a final, this all this information, it uh, doesn't matter if it comes from data, um, global data, from national data, or from surveys that we do on the field, it goes to our data engine that processes this is data, and then it fits this into a data model. Then here it comes, the main core of LOCA is the data governance, how we make it possible that all this information before it goes to public, first is check and verify. So let me give you, this is, uh, this example about how we would control how we edit this report. So let me show to you as, uh, as the same, this is the platform for uh, editors to edit this report. So as you will see here is a bunch of information that Perform Allow we, we see. It. And here on the right side, we click on the newest report that, that we had. You click it here 
And then if we redirect to this report, this new report that we saw, we saw, and here we show this information. What is it? It's a new report that is not public. It says that nothing can pass. And what is it? Is uh, is made by this person? In case it's it's me who made this uh, this report. I provide my contact number. I brought my email, and then you have the image that you can check. Okay, this is. And the goal is that the IM officer that will check this will know. Okay, I can contact this uh, this person. I can check that what he said it's true. And so the idea now is that the person that has the data governments will verify uh, uh, what is it. So maybe he can also call or he can get in, into contact to this civil department, the road department of Malawi and check that this was true. He can also check when is the estimated ending. And then here, he is able to start to fill in all this extra information that if he wants to make it public, everyone will have access to it. And we can see. But also another very important thing is that to decide what is going to be public, and um, should we make this, uh, this is report public or we just want to show that the road is closed. So maybe you can click here, you can go to the uh, smart editor and then here we have a bunch of information that you can edit and one of them is the status so we can change the status and you can say hey this road was closed and now we'll, in a really easy manner we make that everyone in the community knows that the road is closed and then just you can feel much more information that it makes more extensive what this is about and then really easy you click on save and the report is done So, okay, now this information is in check and verify and we make it public. It can go public and anyone uh, can access to it by an API that we have already accessible or by our platforms that we have designed. For example, in this case, what we would see is for Malawi, we would see that the road we edit is this one here that goes this one that I'm highlighting now. So we see that for everyone, they can see that this road is not possible. And also like, it's really important that we can show a lot of information. So for that, we create these models that you can select which kind of information do you want. So now that I show you how this information works, what it's important is how we make this information that all the maritime community takes part on this, that this is a community tool, so everyone is involved to that. And for that, I'm going to go to the next slide. So for here, we have invited um, three prepared, uh, two preparedness officers and also Sylvia that is working for us in, in IEM that will um, talk about how they make it as a community tool. And also Martin is going to help us and he's going to be uh, the mediator. So Martin, your turn yeah. also. Thank you so much, Thank Bernard, you. for this uh, introduction. Um, uh, as we outlined in the beginning, um, the idea of today is really trying to not look at it from a technical level, but from more from a perspective, um, what can it do for me, for my organization, for the overall community, and how can we achieve that further? And especially with the question, how can we engage with the community? Because apart from the information that we get from national and international sources, um, let's say the main, in our perspective, relevant information is, is coming from the field. And this depends on how many people contribute. Um, this is a classical um, user base um, question, whereas we have it in an emergency context, which is relatively new and um, special. So while we have Menti open, Bernard will also um, scan the uh, chat here, that's all the comments. So for the next uh, minutes, I would first of all ask those colleagues that already had experience with LogAI or are about to implement it um, here for their um, views and opportunities. If you have questions, please shoot them in the chat and um, Bernard will um, look at the chat. And then afterwards, um, based on your mentee answers, we will basically go into um, broad audience. So starting, um, Toki, um, 
joining us from Madagascar. First of all, checking, can you hear us? Does the microphone work or do we need to um, set it up? And if not, please just put it in the chat and we're gonna check in the background. Okay, um, the same goes for Derek and Sylvia. Um, is it currently working for you to um, speak up, to open your microphone? And if not, please indicate either by chat or phone or... Yes, Martin, uh, the microphone is working now, thanks. Okay, it's working, thanks a lot. Hello, mine too. Okay, great, and Toki? Yes, yes, he's good. Okay, perfect, great. Uh, thanks so much for, for your time and joining us from all the different locations. So I would just quickly um, start with you, Toki. Um, do you quickly want to introduce yourself, please? Okay, so thank you, Martin. Good day, everybody. Uh, my name is Toki. I'm working here in Madagascar for WSP country office in the supply chain unit as emergency preparedness assistant. Okay, thank you so much. Um, the sound is relatively low, so I'm gonna just repeat what you said and maybe you can try um, speaking up a bit louder. So you're working in Madagascar in the WFP country office um, for um, emergency preparedness and, and logistics. Um, so on, on the background, uh, Toki is one of the colleagues who basically worked since a while on national level um, on the implementation of LOCAI. Madagascar was one of the first countries um, and also went through several pilot and testing cycles. So maybe um, talking from your perspective, what would be the main features or the main things that you deem relevant for Madagascar in regards to LOCAI? What are the things that you would deem most relevant for um, the community? Yes, thank you, Martin. So um, I would like just take uh, two or three words so um, about Logai, as far as I can remember, Madagascar has had the, the opportunity to be one of the first country where the first stage of this platform was initially uh, developed. So uh, during these two or three last years in collaboration and support of the global logistics cluster, we work closely with our government and um, especially our national disaster management office to find the best practice, the best way to ensure that all partners and stakeholders among the humanitarian community are uh, fully involved and adopt the notion of ownership of tools like Logai. Uh, just an example, since the previous uh, year, uh, WFP country office uh, here in Madagascar in collaboration with our uh, NDMO, we are working closely with the uh, logistics sectorial group here uh, where we have at this time around um, around uh, 50 partners from different sectors to make in place a sort of uh, knowledge sharing system and where we are trying now to insert Logai as a common tools for managing data and case information. Um, I am not going to the details, but just to tell you that um, for us in, Ma uh, in here in Madagascar, uh, managing data and information is one of the main challenges that we are dealing with actually. And we are convinced that Logai will be the key to make the difference and to be better in response and as well in all humanitarian coordination uh, going forward. Okay, so um, so to wrap up from my side, uh, I would like just on behalf of Madagascar team to to reiterate our thanks and particularly our commitment to ensure that Loga is rolled out and fully operational as needed uh, in each level uh, here in Madagascar. So that's Thank all from my side. Thank you, uh, Martin. Uh, over to you. Thank you so much, Toki, um, uh, for this. And um, yeah, we are gonna come back to you in a bit. I would like to um, switch over to Derek. So Derek basically works also for this um, project and um, they are about to, or are currently assessing uh, the implementation of Loka in Nepal. So maybe Derek, you want to quickly also introduce yourself? 
your role and also to you what what functionality of, of LockID do you see most relevant in your context? Over to you. Hello, every, thank you, Martin. Hello, everybody. My name is Derek McGuinness, as Martin has already said. I'm the Logistics Preparedness Officer here in Kathmandu, Nepal, working from WFP Country Office. Um, the national government already have a very good working platform uh, called BPAD. The difficulty they had was we were trying to with the country office here, WFP country office, they were trying to introduce uh, road access constraints mapping, but it wasn't very successful. Um, if you've ever been to Nepal, you'll know the topography is very, very challenging and road access is one of the big problems we have here. Literally into some areas, there's only one road. So if you send a convoy on a road in a disaster and there is a, a constraint, there's nowhere to turn around, there's no way to get back, it's stuck there. So road access constraints in the sudden on set disaster here in Nepal. And we have them regularly because of the rains between landslides, floods, and hopefully not in the near future, earthquakes. Um, it, it is a major challenge to uh, access the, the uh, vulnerable communities. So road access constraints is the, the starting point for LogoE here with the, in collaboration with the BPAD uh, platform. Thank you so much, Derek. Um, yeah, I just put in the link an example also what we're showing here on the screen on for physical access constraints um, that we are currently um, using or did especially use for the flood emergency in uh, Ethiopia. Um, so this is one of the features where you can basically um, show or see interactively which roads are currently according to our information accessible or limited or the bridges. And also if there's reports coming from the field, what we also are able to process then is basically make the imagery available because we quite often saw that, especially the images are of use. Um, thank you very much, uh, Derek. Now we have also a third uh, colleague in here in the call, Silvia Lopez, and um, she's IM officer here in Rome and relatively new to the team. So for us, it would be very interesting to see her fresh eyes, how she would see it from an information management perspective when we talk, uh, especially logistics cluster operations. So also over to you, Sylvia. Um, if you maybe quickly want to introduce your role um, and um, also your opinion towards uh, functionality of log A, where do you th see the biggest added value from your perspective? Thank you very much, Martin. So as Ma hello everyone. So as Martin mentioned, I'm relatively new to the team. I'm an IAM officer and my work is mostly focused on the data analysis piece. So I will be I'm working with, uh, with all this um, disaggregation and aggregation from data to information and from information into data. So I think and from the data perspective, I think it, it has a lot of added value and and a lot of potential because I think it's not only a tool for gathering data, directly from the field, which is that is a very, very valuable information. At the same time, it's a, a tool for data visualization because it, it's easy to access, easy to use, and, and easy to see the, the main constraints. And uh, I also see a lot of potential in how are, can we explore that data afterwards. And I'm, I'm talking about if we have the same road that we see every time a lot of reports on flooding on the rainy season, maybe we can start to, to predict what is going to happen with that road in the in mm -hmm. two months in advance. And maybe we can prepare better our activities. It's also, it can also indicate vulnerability um, going even beyond logistics. It indicates vulnerability of some villages or access to some people that may not be able to access markets. And so there could a possible a potential emergency. Um, so I think those are the, 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 the main, and also I'm thinking for instance, another example, like if we see a lot of accident reports on the same road, maybe every year, maybe we can start to say, maybe we can identify hotspots. Like, okay, this road is kind of dangerous. So maybe we can uh, talk to colleagues that are uh, going through that road that are, provide information that we have received a lot of reportings, maybe it's one time of the year, maybe it's all the year. So I think it's, it's a, a good source of information. It follows some standards, so it's easy to analyze. And it's going to be very, very interesting in the future to compare that data with 
weather data with uh, to include the warehousing and to uh, all the potential that it has. And I think it's going to be amazing, all the work that we have. Uh, we young. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sylvia. You mentioned one point I also would just like to um, um, answer on. So basically what um, Bernard showed before is our front end. So we are providing a lightweight web interface that you can basically communicate with LogAI as a user, as a logistician, as someone on the ground from reporting over um, then accessing this information. But be beside that, also to what Derek mentioned, you can as well directly download or contact or link up with the information itself, with the data sets. So this is a so-called application programmer interface or API as most of the people know it. Um, and that allows that if you have another tool in place, be it, and let's say a sophisticated Excel table or Power BI or be it an, another tool, another system, like often, especially national governments have already something in place, then we would not put yet another front end on it, but we would basically say, look, this is the information that we can provide and basically directly link this into their own systems. And that is generally available for, for the entire community. Um, so if someone is interested, please approach us. Uh, we're more than happy to provide more background information on this. Now I mentioned also community, um, all these things like reporting, et cetera, are just as good as there's a community out there to um, willing to support in this. And for example, if someone passes by a road which is flooded, to basically really take this additional effort to um, use a phone, um, a smartphone, the collection app, whatever means to basically inform us that we have this information um, available to then provide to the community. Now, therefore, I would ask you again, Toki, um, in your opinion, what, what, what measures would you see most important that we get more people like a broader user base, more people actively use LogIN to contribute on it. Um, yeah, Toki, over to you, please. Yeah, thank you, Martin. So um, I think that the, the main uh, functionality that uh, LogIE can um, provide for us uh, is maybe about the, the the capacity to analyze scenarios, you know, mm -hmm. um, as uh, Madagascar is hit every year by cyclone floods and so on. So managing uh, all these crises is uh, really important for us, and managing data and key information is. Uh, I, uh, I think uh, the, the, the main challenge is for us at this time. So, um, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, thank, thank you. you very much. Um, these challenges um, are very well noted. Um, maybe also, Derek, just a very quick 30 seconds. How do you think if there was any sort of tool to be implemented, how can we really get, let's say, the broad humanitarian community on board to actively uh, use it. What do you think are the main reason or the main things that make it attractive, not just to get information, but also to contribute? Uh, Certain, to certainly in a country like Nepal, uh, the road access constraints in the event of a sudden onset, uh, knowledge of where you can actually pass by on the roads is gonna be vital for any response. Um, the BPAD system, the, the government system in place already has a good reporting and validation network through the armed police force, the police force and the army. So the combination of both systems would speed everything up. It will allow the humanitarian sector in Nepal easy access to uh, the information they need to plan uh, convoys or movements within the country. Thank you so much. Okay, yeah, very well noted. Um, Sylvia, um, also to you, what do you think maybe also on global level, how could we get all our partners on board to really actively contribute to this. And meanwhile, uh, Bernard, could you please switch to the Menti results? Uh, I think as, as, this is a two-way process. So once you see that one tool is useful for you, you start to think that you have to contribute to that tool. No? So I think that's when you create that the, the community. So you have the logisticians community and it grows to the humanitarian community. So I think it has a lot to do with this uh, part of ownership. 
And I think it's also like okay. a very important piece is how you uh, feel as a user that there are people on the other side that are listening to your suggestions and, and to your needs in order to provide solutions to it. So I think it's going to be the some of the key issues. Thank you so much. Um, then I would also like to yeah, um, use the last minutes to, to open up. I think so far no one had the chat open. Uh, or commented in the chat, but please feel free to either raise your hand or write in the chat if you have a question or comment. And while we were speaking, you were filling out the mentee. Uh, thank you for that. So I would just quickly go through that meanwhile and see um, what the audience uh, sees. So first question was, what are most relevant functions for your work? Uh, I, we asked for the top three. So the near real-time updates uh, are a clear winner and uh, that also came up. Um, the same with the red data collection. This is basically our main, where we see an added value and also the main question, how can we get a broader community engaged into it? Because that's what is living from. The bigger the crowd, the, the, let's say the, the higher the chance someone would see that blocked road and is able to, um, to inform the community. Operational analytics, we also in the, in the documents that we're gonna provide, um, have a couple of examples on that. And then the rest more or less is, um, is be behind, uh, for example, automatic collection from different sources. Um, one of the things that Ben mentioned that we can automatically bring together, for example, in an airport, information from Macau, information from our logistics capacity assessment, information from other users, from aviation unit, and from other organizations and companies that work in aviation, and bring that together to one data set about airports. The second question was, um, how can we engage the community? And that's a very important one for us. So um, yeah, raise awareness of Log IE. Yes, thank you so much. That's our, our big homework now to, to um, improve in terms of advocacy, information, documents, products, etc. So a lot of this is coming um, at the moment. Yeah, confirm the commitment. Hardware is also a very good point I just saw. Um, translate to local language, absolutely. One of the upcoming features is an automatic translation. So if someone would um, report something, for example, in, yeah, in Portuguese in Mozambique, it would be immediately translated to English, Spanish, French um, for the broader community to have access. And we can also do it vice versa. That's one of the next features we're looking into. Um, yeah, uh, thank you so much. We will definitely um, go in detail uh, through these results. And then, yeah, what added value could a log IE app bring? So at the moment, we're just like collecting data, but we, we are more wondering if we go the effort that the logistics cluster community would bring out an application, what would be the things that really bring an added value beyond just an app to report something? Because that is usually not very successful because if you're in, the, in an operation, yeah, you see something, but then it's easier to, you know, shoot a message or something than to find out this app on your phone, how it works. So contact, um, live information, push notification. Okay, we're gonna look into that as well. Um, apart from that, um, we have one point in the chat and then we are already at the end of this um, session. Yeah, exactly. So that's very interesting what Jillian brought up. Absolutely also for us, um, quite often it's not the people who, um, well, let's say part of the program of the operation, but others who basically run into it. That's why we try to build um, a data collection, um, which is layman term level. So it's very easy to use. The questions are meant that a driver or someone who is not a logistician can and do it, but it would be accidental finding. So someone by accident passes by a road. Um, I saw Patrick that you raised your hand. Um, apart from um, this, I will just go to the last slide. And um, as we're now finished at this point, I um, want to first thank everyone for your attendance. Um, we will um, start also now a sign up for emails who's interested in updates on LogIE. And after that, um, if you have any further questions, please at any time, just come back to us, send an email. And thank you so much for your attention for those who have to leave already. And please, uh, Patrick, you have the last minute. Thank you very much, Martin. Uh, good, good morning, everyone. I just want to uh, answer the question that was raised on the chat. Uh, as for us in Haiti, as we're piloting the project, 
we uh, thought it was very important to actually uh, talk about this platform through the uh, uh, coordination office, uh, OCHA, for instance, and they have decided to widely disseminate the link to access the platform to every partners, which means other clusters as well, if they are existing, which here in IT, uh, there are more sectors, but that's a good way to also show that the platform is not only for logisticians and that it can be used as well for uh, other partners in other type of activities as well. And then we can decide, you know, if the information and the sharing mechanism uh, would be, uh, you know, the, the right way to approach every partners on the ground. Thank you very much. And uh, very well noted. Is there any other question or anything else open at the moment? Then I would just like to, um, for those who are still in the call, um, raise the attention. Um, here, I will also share the link in the chat. Um, if you um, want to um, sign up for um, the um, news, it's kind of a newsletter, it will be more of a technical level, um, then please. Um, uh, enter this link. I'm sorry, I'm just heading, putting it here in the chat. And um, therefore, um, we will probably once a month just share an update, not on a regular basis, more like if there's a new update out, if a new country is opening, if we have new features, then we will basically share it with a list of those colleagues signing up in here. Then um, I want to also thank you very much to the panelists who um, made the time available here, Toki, uh, Sylvia, and Derek. And I hope very much that we can soon um, go into the next phase of the locker implementation. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much.